Did you know that with a new attack released a few weeks ago, attackers can now access to any service or open port on your local network by just using JavaScript on your browser? In this video, we are going to demystify this attack and explain you how dangerous this new technique is. On Halloween, Sami Kankar released a write-up for a new attack called Not Sleep Streaming. This write-up explains how to combine different attacks to bypass the network address translation or NAT restrictions of your router or firewall. In other words, it allows malicious websites to use JavaScript to remotely access to any TCP UTP service bound to a victim machine or its local network. Before jumping into the technical details, let's see an overview of the attack so we can understand the different components involved. Sami did not only did an amazing job finding this attack, but he also left an interesting graph that it is pretty self-explanatory. We can see the victim, the NAT service, in this case the router, the website used to deliver the attack, and finally other devices on the victim's local network which can usually only be accessed from within the local network, of course, if no port forwarding rules are in place. In this scenario, imagine you are the victim and you browse into a site with a malicious JavaScript or malicious advertisement. This JavaScript code running on your browser will trick the router to open a port forwarding rule so they can communicate with those services behind your NAT. Scary, isn't it? This attack only works if the target NAT or firewall supports application layer gateways, or ALG. This is a technology that helps to support protocols that require multiple ports to work. A common example is BOIP protocols like SIP. The interesting thing is that nowadays there is a huge range of devices that come with this technology enabled by default, like your home network router, for example. This leaves a huge attack surface to exploit. There is a huge range of attacks that can be leveraged with this technique. Some examples are phishing attacks and targeting router admin interfaces. For the first case, attackers do not need to gather credentials anymore. They just need to send you a link to the malicious JavaScript to expose those sensitive services on your local network. If we combine this with an XSS on your corporate domain, this results on a strong combination. For the second case, there are other simple attacks like exposing the web admin interface of your home router. They usually are in the same well-known ranges and it is not uncommon to find them with default credentials or not credentials at all. And most of the time, they run with outdated firmwares. Let's jump now into the technical details. First, the victim visits a malicious site or, as Sami explains, a site with a malicious advertisement. Second, the internal IP of the victim must be extracted by the browser and sent to the attacker's server. Two techniques can be used to discover the internal IP of the victim, WebRTC or hidden images tags. For the first case, browsers like Chrome debug the local IP via WebRTC over HTTPS. So it may be necessary to bounce between HTTP and HTTPS to successfully exploit this attack. While for the second technique, this has been seen before and it is possible to identify the internal IPs by using hidden image tags that try to load images from all the common gateway addresses like 192.168.0.1 or 10.0.0.1. This, together with on error and on success HTML events, will help attackers to identify valid network ranges. Each time a new image tag is written to the page, a new timer is started. Then, if unsuccess is triggered, this means that the IP is a web server. If the IP is on the network, but it responds with the TCP reset message, it means that the IP exists, but there is no web server. This will trigger an on-error event. Finally, if no reset is received, neither a response, it means that the IP does not exist on the network. Once the subnet range has been identified, the same timing attack is replicated across all possible local IPs of the range, until the local IP address of the victim is identified. The fastest response is likely the internal IP, 
However, sending the final attacks to all the possible IPs may increase the chances to happen. There is still something else we need to know before performing the attack. The attacker will use JavaScript again to send a large TCP packet to the attacker server via a POST HTTP request, generating therefore a TCP segmentation. This means that the original packet is too big to be contained in only one packet and multiple TCP segments are required to be sent instead of one. Once the POST request is received by the server, the attacker will calculate the offset where this packet is fragmented and will send a second POST HTTP request, but this time a zip registration packet will be hidden inside of the POST data. Here is where things get pretty interesting. Let's analyze this from the router perspective. ALG works by intercepting and analyzing the specified traffic, zip packets for example, and defining dynamic policies to allow traffic to pass through the gateway. So whenever ALG detects that a new peer-to-peer -peer communication is required in order to establish the BOIP connection, it will open the required ports for the communication channel. You may be guessing how this is going to end. And that's why SAMI is injecting a zip packet just where the next fragmentation begins. It seems that most routers are not smart enough to realize that this packet is part of a sequence of multiple TCP packets, and therefore it is tricked to open a port when it sees this new TCP fragment that has a format of a zip register message. For those who are more used to web attacks, this immediately reminds me of HTTP smuggling attacks. Not the same technique, but it does something similar with TCP and UDP packets. Really clever. Now that the router has been tricked by this zip packet, it will open the port mentioned there, and the attacker can now access any TCP port on the victim machine despite not being in place. This attack can also be done with UDP, sending a large UDP beacon using WebRTC turn authentication, forcing an IP fragmentation. If you want to reproduce this on your own instead of using the POC provided by SAMI, I will recommend you the following things so you can save some time. Launch this on a new droplet, clone the repo, set the max packet size using the IP road replace uh, command in Linux, and then set up an Apache server with PHP and no extensions. You will need to create a self-signed certificate for SSL, remember that we need to bounce between HTTP and HTTPS, and adapt the JavaScript to work with your server. This will involve editing all the URLs to point to your server. Open the ports on your server firewall and run the fake zip and turn server scripts from the repository. Let me know in the comments if you want more videos like this or what kind of contents do you like. Thanks for watching and hope to see you soon. Bye.